Hi, everybody, and welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we developed an automated system to help you win big every time. Again, it does not matter what sport you're betting on. We have you covered. So, before we get into some Major League Baseball action for August 7th, I want to invite you to join so you will have access to the VIP Club section, which has all of these great tools to help you make your picks. So, the Major League Baseball season is about two-thirds of the way complete, and now really begins a push in the final couple months for a playoff position. So it's a full slate of games for Sunday, so let's take a look at some of these right now. And we're not going to look at all of them. We should take a look at about five or six of them, and that will be the same thing here for today. So the first matchup we want to look at is the Washington Nationals at the Philadelphia Phillies. This NL East rivals hit the field in Philadelphia, and you can see the teams are heading in the opposite direction. The Phillies are burning hot at the moment, winners of five out of the last six. While the Nationals are ice cold down, they have... Uh, let's take a look there. There we go. They have lost four out of their last six, including their last two. Corey Abbott is scheduled to pitch for the Nationals versus Aaron Noah for the Phillies. If we take a look at the pitching matchup more closely, you see Abbott does not have a record 0-0, and his ERA is 1, and it's a very limited sample size. He is 0-0 with the 2.25 ERA over his last three starts, and he has been a good bet so far at plus $280. Noah's having a, a decent season ERA-wise, 3.25, but he's only 7-8, and eight, and he has been a very poor bet at minus $522, and his ERA over the last three is a high 5.70. If you look at the over-under lately, you see that the Washington has been over in four out of the last six, while the Phillies have been over in three out of their last six. The power ranking indicator shows the Phillies at plus 23. Washington was at... 21 just a few days ago and they have dropped to 14 because of their recent skid if you take a look at the stability factor how um well have the two teams played according to their favorite underdog status you see washington has been very steady at plus 29 doesn't mean they've been great it just means that they've been performing consistently with regard to their favorite underdog status while the phillies have been very poor in that category at plus three the score prediction likes the phillies by a five to three score with about 79% level of confidence. I'm going to go along with this one. I believe the Phillies have enough to win this one at home, and I think it's going to be a lower scoring game, so go with the Phillies and under the line. The next game we want to see is the Boston Red Sox and the Kansas City Royals. Neither team is playing their best baseball lately. You see the Red Sox average down at the moment. They are 3-3 three three over their last six, while Kansas City's average at the moment. They are coming off of a win, and they are also 3-3 three three over their last six games. Cutter Crawford is scheduled to pitch for Boston versus Brad Keller for the Royals. If we take a closer look at the pitching matchup, we can see here that Crawford is 3-3 three three with a 3.86 ERA and a good bet at plus $151 on the pitcher profit oscillator, while Keller is 5-12, uh, a very poor record with a 4.61 ERA and a poor bet as well at minus $357. If you take a look at the power ranking indicator, see Boston on the downward trend. They were at 25. They have dipped to plus 16. While Kansas City is on a slight upward trend over the last couple of days, they are up to plus 9. The score predictor likes Boston by a 4-2 score, but the confidence of the prediction is only 34%. So take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. The stability factor, which I always like to look at, you can see that Kansas City has been more consistent at plus 22, while Boston is at plus 8, and they have dipped in that category over the last couple months. The way I look at this game, though, I think that Boston is the better team overall. I think they will uh, play well, win this game on the road, but I would avoid the over-under bet in this one. Next game we want to take a look at is the Yankees and the Cardinals. This is an interesting matchup between two teams in opposite leagues. The Yankees come in average down while the Cardinals are burning hot. You see the Yankees over the last six games are, there we go, they are 3-3 three and three and they have lost three out of their last four, while the Cardinals have won four in a row and they are, are five, or, well, no, they have won four in a row and five out of their last six games. The only loss was a 7-6 to six decision on July 30th against Washington. Frankie Montas is scheduled to pitch for the Yankees versus Adam Wainwright for the Cardinals. If we take a look at the pitching matchup carefully, you can see Montas is 4-9. and nine. But his ERA is just solid at 3.18, and uh, but he's been very poor bet at minus $796. Wainwright is even on the season win and loss, 8-8, eight and eight, 
a solid ERA of 3.11 and an ERA of 2.97 over the last three. But his home um, ERA has been excellent at 1.79. Take a look at the power ranking indicator. You can see that the Cardinals now are up here at the top at plus 28, while the Yankees at plus 26 just uh, what, about a week ago have dropped to plus 9. If you look at the over-under, there you see the Yankees have been involved in high-scoring games over in the last six. The Cardinals over in three out of the last five with one push. The score predictor likes the Cardinals by an 8-1 to score or 65% level of confidence. I do think the Yankees will play better than an 8-1, to but I do like the Cardinals. They're, they're playing very well, and Wainwright has been excellent at home. I like the Cardinals to win. I like this game to be low-scoring in a game under the line. Next game we want to look at is the Giants and the Athletics. The Giants face the A's in a battle of the two California Bay teams. Uh, the teams are heading in opposite directions with the Giants ice cold down and Oakland burning hot. You see Logan Webb is scheduled to pitch for the Giants. Uh, the A's had not yet named their starter. Webb is 9-5 with a 3.20 ERA, but has not been a good bet at minus $175. Take a close look at the over-under. You see that the Giants have been involved in games over the line in four out of their last six, while the A's have been involved in games under the line in four out of their last six. So since they're on opposite sides there, I kind of like to avoid the over-under bet in that scenario. Uh, the score predictor has Oakland by an 8-3 to three score with about 53% level of confidence in the prediction. The power rankings indicator shows Oakland... Look at here, they were at plus 26 just a few days ago, not even a week ago, and they considerably dropped just to plus 6 at the moment. And Oakland is up from plus 10 to plus 17 over the last few days. The stability factor, how consistent have the two teams been? Oakland more stable at plus 22. Um, the Giants at plus 11. And that's actually their highest point of the season. They've been very inconsistent overall. They've been more stable over the last, uh, say, what, maybe the last three weeks or so, they've been more consistent in that regard. In the end, I like Oakland to continue their hot play. I like them to win in a game going over the line. The last game we want to look at is the Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets. In this NL East battle, this is going to be a great game. Um, I, I like Atlanta here on the road, but do I? Well, let's take a look. Atlanta generally has been playing pretty well on the road, but if you look lately, they are just 4-2 and two over their last six, which is not bad at all. It's actually very solid, but they've lost their last two, right? So, And one of those two came on the road against the Mets. So their average status at the moment. Um, the Mets are 5-1 and one over their last six games, winning their last two. The pitching matchup is Spencer Strider for the Braves versus Jacob deGrom for the Mets. deGrom does not have a record yet this season at 1.80 ERA, and this is a very limited sample size for this season, right? He's just coming off injury, so his um, value in the pitcher profit oscillator is minus 100, so not a good bet at the moment. Uh, Strider, nice record, nice ERA, what, 2.79 ERA with a record of 6-3, but he has also not been a very good bet at minus $6. If you look at the over-under, the Mets have been involved in games over the line in four out of their last six, while the Braves over the line in just two out of their last six. They usually like to avoid the over-under in that scenario, but let's take a look at the score predictor. This score predictor is going to have me leaning towards the under. Four to one for the Mets, with a pretty high confidence prediction of 74%, and with the two pitchers that are on the mound, I kind of think that it's going to be more of a low-scoring game. The power ranking indicator has the Mets at plus 24 with the Braves at plus 18. In the end, I like the Mets to win this one. They're the better team. They're playing at home. The Mets to win in a game going under the line. So you look, there's Colorado and Arizona, Los Angeles and Seattle, San Diego Padres and the Dodgers. Now, this is actually the last game I want to look at. I mistakenly said that with the last game with the Braves and the Mets, but this is the last game, and this is actually going to be the game of the day, right? So it's the Padres in Dodgers in an NL West clash. You see both teams are playing well. The Padres burning hot down. The Dodgers burning hot. Padres winners of five out of their last six. There we go. Five out of their last six. While the Dodgers have won five out of their last six as well. 
A great pitching matchup of you Darvish versus Tyler Anderson. Darvish is 10 and 4 with a 3.30 ERA and a good bet at plus $251. Anderson 12 and 1, outstanding record with an ERA of 2.89 and a great bet at plus $564. The score predictor has the Dodgers by an 8-1 to one score with 76% level of confidence. I'm not leaning for the Dodgers to get that high of a score. I mean, it's a very good pitching matchup. I don't think either team hits eight runs. Um, the power ranking indicator, the Dodgers are at plus 29. While the Padres, you see, have increased considerably. You see the big upward trend. They are now at plus 27. The teams that have been involved in games over the line, about half of their games over the last 10 combined. If you look at the volatility oscillator, this consistency factor, the Dodgers are extremely stable at plus 37, while the Padres have not been very, very consistent all year long, and they are just at plus 8. In the end, I like the Dodgers at home, but I think this is going to be a lower scoring game, a good pitching battle, the Dodgers, and under the line. So there you have it. Those are the games for Major League Baseball for August 7th. Happy betting, and we will see you next time.